Hello and welcome. Uh, this video is uh, being rushed out a little bit to correct a previous video that I published last night. Um, the video uh, in question concerned this particular photograph, which or still frame from a short video clip, which was taken from partway up Traprain Law in East Lothian in Scotland. And this photograph uh, or still frame uh, proves that the Earth is not flat in two different ways. Now, my video yesterday actually contained some slight errors in terms of the heights attributed to various objects, including the camera height. The correction uh, that I'm going to make does not affect the conclusions to which I came. In fact, it now makes it even more clear that the Earth cannot possibly be flat. So in this slightly enhanced version with the levels adjusted of the picture, uh, we can see that yesterday I claimed the camera height of 150 or 152 metres. This was based on a topographic map overlaid onto Google Earth. I stated the hill height is 149 metres and the hub of this turbine at 158 metres. The hill height was also based on a topographic map. Now, this gave me a little problem because it appeared that the camera wasn't quite level at the time this particular still shot was taken. Uh, not surprising given that I was uh, uh, standing, holding the camera by hand on Traprain Law. Uh, it was a bit windy and I was a little bit out of puff having clambered part way up the hill. What I did in yesterday's video was to rotate the picture slightly to compensate for this fact. Or what I believed to be true at the time. And now I had corrected the eye level height to the lower of these two lines. And this is if I'd raised the hill on the left here, Meikle Bin, up so that it went very slightly above the eye level line I was using. Now it actually turns out, thanks to a, a subscriber and commenter on my uh, videos who posted a link to more detailed ordnance survey maps than I had used, it turns out that, in fact, this picture is completely level. It turns out my camera height was actually 157 to 159 metres, probably nearer to 159 metres when you take into account that I was standing and holding the camera. The hill height turns out to be 159 metres. And the turbine height turns out to be 159 metres as well. Now, for those of you who think this is too much of a coincidence to be true, uh, I suspect that when the planning application was submitted, uh, either the planners uh, were going to insist that the turbine would, did not exceed the height of this hill, or um, the, uh, the planners, uh, the, sorry, the applicants themselves uh, decided to keep the turbine lower than the height of that hill so that it didn't become, it, nobody could claim it, it was taller than the nearby landscape. Um, uh, I, I suspect that this sorts of considerations, having gone through a planning application process a couple of times myself, I suspect that this is the sort of thing that would have gone on. And therefore, we, uh, it's not surprising that the turbine height and the hill height uh, are very similar, if not identical. So before I go on to show what uh, the consequence of this is, the consequence is that uh, eye level is level with the top of the hill and the turbine, uh, the turbine hub. Before I do that, let's look at why these new figures are probably uh, as accurate as we are going to get and more likely to be correct than the ones I used yesterday. So this is uh, Google Earth. Um, I don't want to look at Traprain Law just to begin with. I want to look at uh, the other hill in question. So we'll come over here. 
What I've done is to uh, overlay the ordnance survey map, the detailed ordnance survey map, onto uh, Google Earth. And this ordnance survey map has a spot height indicated by the arrow here of 159 metres. We've got a 140 metre contour line, the next one's 145, the slightly darker one, 150, then 155, and then the spot height at 159 metres. Just to show you that the overlay is accurate, because that will be important in a moment, we have here the, if I change the transparency, you can see that the roads, the, hill, uh, the field boundaries, uh, the location of the hill, the buildings and so on, all line up really, really well. So, no doubt this is in the right place. Now I've placed a pin here on the 135 meter contour line. So this is the 140 meter contour line. This is 135 meters going down here. And the next, uh, the next line up, uh, this one is 135 meters as well. Uh, this one here will be 140 meters as it's indicated. So if you go in this direction, you're either staying staying level or slightly increasing. It takes a whole distance to go 10 meters. Now this is the um, uh, the location of the wind turbine is just to the left of where I have placed this pin on the 135 meter contour line. If we go to Let's take the map, uh, wrong map. Let's take the map off there. Um, the wind turbine can be revealed by looking at more recent imagery. And here is the turbine, very close to where we had the uh, the contour line. You see that still on the contour line. Oops. And the wind turbine base is very, very close to that. So we can say the wind turbine base is 135, possibly 136 metres, but it won't be any higher than that. Now, in the uh, video yesterday, I showed you that the height of that wind turbine is 24 metres to the top, to the hub, with a blade length of 10 metres and a total of 34 metres. But we are looking at the wind turbine hub, so 24 meters is what we're interested in. And 24 meters is uh, plus the 136 meters that we think the base is at, gives us 160 meters. Uh, so around 159 to 160 meters for the wind turbine hub. Just to further confirm that this is the number of turbines in the first column the hub height in the second column, blade height in the third column, total height in the fourth column. If I can find, there we go, there it is. Alderston Mains, Huntington, Haddington, East Lothian. And this is a planning application approval um, uh, from uh, East Lothian Council. We can confirm that indeed this is the correct turbine and the correct farm simply by placing a little man down here at uh, Street View. And as we scroll the camera around, there is the turbine, and here is a sign saying Alderston Mains Farm. That's the road down to the farm itself. And you can see the farm buildings here and the wind turbine here. So there's no doubt that we have the correct turbine. There is no doubt that we have the uh, correct height for that turbine now. And there's no doubt that we have the correct height for the top of the hill. 
near to the Galton Lodge here. So the next thing to do is to check the camera height. And I've done this by a similar method using a more accurate ordnance survey map. Here, here we go. So here is uh, Troprain Law, and I've kept the uh, pin showing where I was for the elevator uh, shot three. Um, let's just scroll this back out and show you that the overlay is very accurate indeed. So if we change the uh, transparency, you can see that the field outlines correspond really nicely to the overlay. The roads correspond very nicely to the overlay. There is a slight difference in this ordnance survey map in the footpaths marked up Traprain Law. Um, this is probably because the Ordnance Survey map will be somewhat older than the imagery that we're looking at. And uh, so it will show old footpaths, which do have a habit of uh, kind of changing a little bit as people find slightly different routes up hills. So we know that this is accurately overlaid and we can now check the camera height using the contour lines. So if we zoom in, we have a 175 meter contour line, and then we have five meter intervals between the contour lines. So this would be 170 meters, 165 meters, 160 meters, and then our pin and the 150 meter contour line is here. It kind of disappears behind these uh, features here and reappears here. And so this would be 150 meters and this uh, 100 and yeah, I'm sorry, there should be 155 meter contour line as well. It looks like 155 meter contour line here. It disappears a little bit behind this black line, and reappears just here, and then the 150 meter contour line a little bit lower down. Um, so reading down from here, 175, 170, 165, 160. And we know that this is very close to 160 uh, meters, maybe 158 meters. Uh, because I was holding the camera a meter and a half or so above the ground, then we have a um, camera height of 159, possibly a, near 160 meters. So I'll use 159 meters. So that's why I am pretty convinced that these camera uh, heights and hill heights are now accurate. Um, I've placed the camera height 157 to 159 because we we're guessing a little bit uh, exactly how far um, below the 160 meter contour we actually are with uh, our, my feet and exactly where the camera height might be. It could even be as high as 159 or 160 uh, meters, but very, very close to the same height as the hill. Well, we know that the turbine height now is going to be 159, possibly 160 metres. Again, very, very close to the same height as the hill, giving us our eye level height of 159 metres. And the whole of the Mikkelbin hill is now well below eye level. 570 metres of Mikkelbin all below eye level. Now the rules of geometry and perspective dictate that with the camera up at this level, and this being our eye level, nothing that is taller than 159 meters can appear below this line. Pardon me. And yet Mikkelbin at 570 meters appears below the line. Yes, Mikkelbin's angular size will be less because it is further away, but most of Mikkelbin should be above this line and only a small amount of Mikkelbin should appear below the line if the earth is flat. This only applies if the earth is flat. 
if the surface we're on is um, a, a sphere or you know, uh, rugby ball shaped or cylinder shaped or conical shaped or some other kind of shape, um, uh, then this land would be, the land between us and Meikle Bin would be sloping away from us or curving away from us uh, and dropping down and therefore taller objects can appear below eye level. But on a flat surface, nothing that is taller than 159 meters should appear below this line. Everything above that height should appear above the line. This is easy to demonstrate and I've shown this before and I will show it again because it illustrates the point perfectly. The camera at the top of this can uh, and it, the eye level line uh, lines up with the top of every can laid out along this floor. At every orange can the line is exactly at the top of that can and exactly at the bottom of the silver can on top. The silver cans uh, reduce in apparent size, in angular size, as they further into the distance, but only from the top down. The base of the can remains on the line and can never go below the line. The orange cans reduce in angular size from the bottom up. The top of that can can never go above the line. And this is a simple fact of geometry and perspective and is very, very simple for you to test yourself as long as you're prepared to take a little trouble to actually line your camera up correctly at the right height. A number of uh, flat earthers have attempted to debunk my videos by placing the camera above or below this eye, uh, actual eye level and then claiming all sorts of uh, things. The point about this is having the camera uh, at the same height as a reference object in the frame and you then have a reference for all other objects in the same picture. We can look at this whole thing from sideways on as well uh, just to confirm uh, what we're talking about. If we have the camera at 159 meters I've done here and we have the hilltop at 159 meters eye level remains constant over a flat surface. The eye level line is parallel to the surface and therefore anything that we see in the distance must be uh, in on that eye level line must be 159 meters above the surface. Anything taller appears above the line, anything shorter appears below the line. Uh, the wind turbine can now be placed exactly at the same height as our eye level. Now, the other proof in my picture is that the Queensferry Crossing Bridge Towers, the central tower at 210 metres and the south tower at 202 metres, should both be in our field of view. And we should be able to see them above the line of eye level. We should be able to see around 50 metres, 40 metres now, because we've changed these heights here, 40 to 50 metres for the central tower should be above the eye level line. And yet they appear absolutely nowhere in this picture at all. There is no sign at all of those bridge towers. Uh, one commenter suggested that this might be the um, South Bridge Tower. Uh, firstly, it's in the wrong place. Uh, as we'll see in a moment, the South Bridge Tower should actually be uh, um, appearing up well above these trees. Remember, have we got eye level on here? No, we don't. Um, the South Bridge Tower um, should appear uh, above the height of the hill here, uh, up here. And the North Bridge Tower should appear between the house and the hill, uh, somewhere up here. Equal bin should also be somewhere up here. And yet there's no sign of any of them if we 
if we click on to oops that's not what i meant to do if we click on to google earth i've placed a couple of lines i should have a couple of lines i may have lost them i have lost them okay so we'll draw them in let's take our um, map off and let's draw in a, a line to the bridge central tower So this goes to the central tower of the bridge, as you can see, and we started from our viewpoint on Traprain Law. And we can see that that line bisects the little gap between the house, Galton uh, Lodge, and the hill here. If we draw in a second line, again, starting from our location at Traprain Law, and past the Edinburgh docks and on to the bridges, we come to the south tower here. And we can head back and see that particular line of sight passes approximately halfway between the Galton Lodge and the wind turbine here. So we would expect to see the bridge tower here roughly halfway between these two and the other one here. And they're completely uh, out of view, hidden by this land here. If we look at a, a curvature calculator, uh, wrong shot, here we go. If we look at Walter Bislin's curvature calculator, we can see that what we observe in reality matches the globe Earth predictions really well, and what we see uh, does not match flat Earth predictions at all. So this is uh, Mikul Bin, as represented on Walter's calculator, and this is the hill by the Galton Lodge. And we see that Mikul Bin appears considerably lower in our field of view than the Galton Lodge. Uh, we can add atmospheric refraction, uh, uh, and still it uh, appears considerably lower than our eye level line and the top of the Galton Hill. On a flat earth, we would expect most of Meikle Bin to be well above the top of Galton Hill and well above our eye level. And we can change the uh, objects that we're looking at and we can look for the uh, bridge uh, towers where they should be. So the distance becomes 46,500 and we'll do the south tower and we'll make it into a tower rather than a hill. And we now have this observation. We'll zoom in a little bit and 
bring it in a little bit there and I think we can perhaps change the positions a little bit like this. So on a globe we see that the um, bridge tower, the south tower will be well below the height of the hill uh, on a globe but on a flat earth it would be above the height of the hill. Um, the land that we're expecting it to be above is a little bit lower than the 159 meters of uh, the hill. It's uh, more like, well, now we'll probably change it to 150. And still we have the bridge tower below the height of the land on a globe earth, but on a flat earth, the bridge tower extending well above the height of the land. And even if that land is 145 meters, we are still at a point where the top of the um, hill, uh, the bridge tower is just barely uh, breaking above the surface. And remember, we have trees and we have a building in the locations where we would expect to see the towers. So the towers should be obscured from our view on a uh, globe earth, uh, but on a flat earth should be clearly visible. Uh, if you reduce the amount of refraction, then, uh, then it becomes even, even less likely to see it on a globe uh, and it remains the same on a flat earth. So what we have is reality completely matching globe earth predictions and not matching at all flat earth predictions. This picture for two reasons is impossible on a flat earth. Just like all the other pictures that I've shown recently. I now have maybe seven or eight different observations, some from near Dunfermline, looking across at the bridges, and some, the more recent ones, about five of them, from Traprain Law and from the Hopeton Monument, all of which are completely impossible to take on a flat earth. Earth is not flat. 